in terms of dust and wards, but we'll have to see. It sounds like they're loading in. Communications going across. So biggest game of their careers here to get through, especially for Cloud9. They want to continue. We'll send it over to the commentators. It's Toby and Sinneran. Thank you very much. Oh, we are directly into the action right now. Myself, Toby One, as well as Sindarin. We are your non-biased commentary. Sindarin, I have a little... Like, if I had an RV flag right now, I'd probably be waving it. Um, I'm loving what these guys did in game number two. And with their lineup here in game number three, they're showing they want to push, they want to fight, and they want to be up in C9's face. Bad, bad, bad bias, Toby. I'm sorry. I'm bad, sorry. Bad, I'm Toby. sorry. Bad, Toby. Yeah. Um, so going into this game is um, looking at Cloud 9s lineup is what I want to point out first is that they got the opening that they're always looking for. They got the first pick Doom. And what I'm worried for for them right from the get go in this game is that when you saw how the previous game went with how Navi played, they were like, hmm, this is actually a pretty good recipe to playing against Cloud9. Let's do it again. They don't have the same heroes, but they have the same kind of style. They want to put pressure early on. Instead of the Enigma, they now have the Prophet with the summons for the frontlining. Instead of the Veno, they now have the Shadow Shaman Mass Serpent Wards. And then they just brute force fights with Brewmaster Ultimate and Death Prophet with the Exorcism. I was actually expecting Navi to last pick the Chen over the AA just for the extreme team fight and early game push, but. They might be uh, prioritizing the AA the for the chilling begins. touch in early engages so they can get I, some easy kills and then I got a feeling, man, ice blast for the team fight. The only reason why this AA is up, and initially I was like, okay, it's, it's obviously like you're looking for first looking, looking to go through the jungle. It's an enabler for the offlaner. They're actually running a try offlane with a Shadow Shaman. It doesn't happen very often, but with the Ancient Apparition, it makes it possible. So he'll work with a Vorth, which gives a lot more space to find up on the top lane as the Prophet. And then he, he knows he can have that rotation support come in from Navi at any point. So it's nicely done from there. And you're not thinking, hey, let's just farm up inside the jungle with these heroes. And that kind of like screws around with Pylai Dai. Because the greatest thing about a bounty hunter is normally when he goes up against a jungler, he leeches the experience. He finds some pick offs on some big creeps, and that's basically all she wrote. But he can't do anything as far as harassment goes on this bottom lane. He literally gets shut down. It's the biggest weakness of the support bounty hunter out of all. It's simply. If he needs to be played as a lane support, he is pretty awful compared to all other regular supports. And Bounty Hunter usually isn't played as a support look, even. Look at the top lane. Generally man. played as an off laner. Look at the top lane. Paladai knows he's in trouble. There's a sentry ward on the lane, and purposefully, Funnick is leaving this dragon just off the side. So he, he can't actually contest Bone 7 for farm, which isn't a great thing for Funnick. But what he can do is always make sure he doesn't die or get anywhere near close enough to death. Like, because he won't get too close to Bone 7 or Paladai. And at the same time, in the bottom lane, Eternal Envy has chosen to leave the lane for a bit, look, going out to look for a creep. This is quite a long time it's taking him for this. And at the same time, Navi will just be pulling back the lane. So the Equilibrium now easily in their favor on the lane, and there is no pull available for, for Cloud9. So this is a... This is actually a really big problem for them. And as far as the mid lane goes, that one is at least going even for them. So uh, Sing Sing is getting a decent start with some good farm. I think Ember Spirit has to be the big player in this game because when you look over at Cloud9 and what Navi are planning, Navi want to push towers. It's no secret. Oh, and yeah. Cloud9 knew that early on in the draft, even when you saw how Navi were picking it. They don't have good wave clear. They actually don't have anything to They're deal with mid. creeps. They're coming mid. But look at the sentry ward. It's already down, so he sees Pylite Eye. He's going to walk back into him, and maybe Siri Changer does connect on Sid on Dendi. And now he's going to go down. Trying to go for the silence, but Eternal Envy appears out of the jungle at just the right time. It is so important important for Cloud9 to get off to a good start in this game. I think if they if they lose the early game or if they play just a, a somewhat even one, I Draft can handle Navi in the in the mid game. There's a lot of pressure on the bounty hunter to perform to set up ganks like the one he just did in the mid lane because if that doesn't happen as I said, no wave clear. Yep. When you're playing a pushing lineup, this is like the dream team to fight into because Cloud9 just look like a lineup that can't team fight back until they have items and crucial levels up. Yeah. And Navi might just be getting to that phase a little too early for them, but at least with that first blood for Sing Sing, the reason he needs to be the big player is they need the damage, and Flame Guard could be the, one of the solutions to Navi's push here. Yeah. At the same time, the push isn't even started. We're three minutes in, I'm looking at a Vorst who's going to be able to buy up his Arcane Boot shortly, and that's an enabler for Kuro and Puppy to spam out a little bit more. But I almost want to give massive props to Aoi2000 for not dying on this bottom lane. It could actually be one of the biggest things. He's trying to stay close to find experience, but he can't actually achieve that because Puppy and Kuro are basically being really good watchmen and keeping him away from the creep wave. But Aoi's just making sure this tier one tower, if it's going to come under pressure, you can at least drive the creep wave back and Keep the power, uh, keep the top lane. They're going in on Funnick. Uh, he's, he's gonna, gonna go into the coming in. 
Bone 7, he's gonna be in trouble. The clock is pushing Kuro back away. And Kuro can't reach Bone 7 just yet. He might be able to cut through. He's got Shackles, but Pardai's also here. There's no Sentry Ward revealing the position, though. The Creep Wave will just follow Bone 7 out. And that means now on bottom lane, Skyrath feels a lot more confident because the Sentry is gone. There's no Shackles to hold him for the cold feet. Then yeah. again, Poppy never even leveled that. We're probably gonna see AUI level up to level three or four from this, since the push is already going his way from Navi. There's two range creeps pushing down the, the lane here, so now he's gonna be in a great position on this lane, and I think getting levels on Skyrath could set them up for some more ganks early on. When I'm looking at Navi's lineup, I'm thinking Cloud9, main, main priority is to kill Denny. They're actually going to do it again here. Time. He got it off to the Searing Chains can't be used. He's back in range of the tower. He needs more help coming in. The Courier trying to fly in some extra items. The Sing Sing, he does take a large amount of damage from that tower. But they still get a second kill over on Dendi, and that makes it worthwhile. This is the best oh, hero for Cloud9 lane. to focus on, of for course. sure. That's rather aggressive, man. Going past the tower, clapping onto the tree line, thinking that Aoi 2000 was still in the neighborhood. But he was nowhere near it. Another thing we haven't talked about just yet is, you know, when you first pick Doom, there's been a lot of teams that have tried counterpicking Doom by just getting heroes where you don't oh, care so much about Koro. getting Doom. Oh, Sing yeah. Sing is coming up with the Invis road. He can Siri chain two heroes right now, and he's in range for it. He only got Funnick out, but that can't pick up both kills. Funnick into the tree line, and Cloud9 is proud. He can TP himself out with a oh, close to Rose oh. 7. Push him straight back out again. It's just been superb play by Cloud9. It really felt like Navi got the upper hand to draw, but Cloud9 have the upper hand in play so far. They are playing the perfect early game so far. The rotations from Pi have been great. Now Sing Sing rotating top of the Invis rune to secure a double kill for Bone 7. He's already level 6. Five Bottom minutes lane. in on the clock. He's, 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 in. he's going for Aoi 2000. There's a chilling touch point of damage of boss. Gets the clamp slow and damage off. And now he will go down here on the bottom lane. So now he's finally getting themselves on the board. Five minutes into the game, and that was the same time C9 was coming down here for a kill because they moved Pilot I died down to this bottom lane. But you see what happens, you get a kill with Navi, and instantly with a Prophet down here, they just Radiant force into the lane. Tower. This is still a pushing lineup. Coming out. Yeah, the hook shot is available. Oh, he's gonna go in again, too! And they're gonna go harder! Funnick, he's locked in! The battle is sold! He's trying to move back here, Funnick! So Poppy takes the damage, but it's gonna be too much. Poppy goes down, double kill for Bone 7. A ball's being sealed up here by Aoi. He'll TP out, Quab makes his way oh, in. Oh, the level oh, death! He actually stops unless he lets it go. There's the level death, as you said. Meaning a boss will go down, and then he's just sitting here with his ultimate. He feels he's safe, he's got a, he's got Pyrite Eye right tower. behind him, and Bone Seven's coming up pretty close Dyer's as well. He's got no battery assault, but Colt in three seconds. Dendi, the ultimate is wearing off in a moment, and he's getting killed off. He just hung around way too long. And free gold while Sing top Sing lane, on top Sing. lane. He will get a Searing Chain off, but will still Radiant's die. A counter gank. Now we have lost so much to Sing and I in the first six minutes. It's just amazing to watch how many openings they're finding with the few tools they have. I was worried for Cloud9 that they wouldn't be able to find these early game ganks, and they're finding way more than I thought they would. Even if they were to play a good game, this is just phenomenal play. Like, yeah. It's been really executing eight kills though. six minutes in with a support Skyrath and Bounty is is pretty incredible. It's not to say that Bounty is a bad roamer. He's actually Radiant's one of the great ones with an early over Venom, attack. but they've just all these kills have just been executed really smoothly. Pretty much, they've had few things to use and they've just used them perfectly. It's. It's pretty I, I'm, incredible. I'm just still trying to understand what Navi was trying to achieve down there. Like, forcing the tower is one thing, but then you rotate in Dendi. He throws the ulti out, but he's not even in range of the tower. So C9 managed to get Navi to burn not only the ultimate of Cropulus, a lot of time and heroes of Navi. They all went down. I think Navi weren't ready for for the hook shot. They didn't even... They might have not realized that Cropulus was so in the early. Yeah, they're Aoi. gonna get Aoi. There's a dude coming out from Eternal Envy to a boss, but a boss out of all the heroes of Navi, he can tank that one as long as he can keep his distance here from Eternal Envy. But funny, he has no man for his Pratt was also on cooldown. A boss level death from Envy will ensure the kill. No potential of denying out to a neutral there, or even getting him to that regeneration rune that was just bolted up by Krob on the bottom lane. One but now Koro, oh, he's in trouble. He's in so much trouble. Gets hit to now to slow down, spirit in, spirit out. And a very Dyer's simple execution there from Sing Sing will get the kill and pushing Dyer's the T1 tower on the top. So the attack. first tower gets to be claimed as he belongs to C9. If they keep this up, so we, we put a lot of emphasis on how Navi's lineup was going to be scary in the mid game once they get their items and can start their push. But when Cloud9 are so far ahead, they get 
very many options for executing ganks. With Navi's heroes as fragile as, fragile as they are right now, there's pretty much no one sings in count solo at this moment. They have a level 8 clockwork at 8 minutes, and he's 5 and 0 on the offlane clock in this game, Bone 7. Arguably, for me, also his best, hands down best hero in the game. He is yep. a very, very good clockwork player. So, oh, that was an interesting yep. sound. Yeah, so um, <laughs> Navi are now coming back towards the middle lane. All right. Yeah. They're so going to have to try to put pressure. Yep. If they wait around, they get killed all the time. Their bottom lane failed. They need to bring down tier 1 towers. They're Radiant behind, they need to have fortified. some kind of advantage. Now, fortification will be used by, Cl by Cloud9. We've actually got Doombringer TPing to, okay, the tier 3 tower in the middle lane, a grand total of a quarter of the map. Uh, and he'll be picking up a new creep at the moment. Sing Sing missing on the Searing Chains. So they need to feel a little bit more confident here in the middle lane, but a little bit of Shuri Toss, a little bit of Rocket Erasmus, could put the clock work in the back of their mind. You can see Bone 7 moving out. This one range creep kind of spoils his party on the side, but it reveals to Na'Vi that he's there. I'm surprised too that Funnick is uh, keeping his tree so clumped up here in the middle lane. If Clockwork's coming for a hook, you want these trees nicely spaced out across the mid. So they can be interceptors there for the hook shot. So now we just use the exorcism and Dyer's touch the tower a little bit. I think it attack. wasn't even full health when they started. Great counter where they're coming out by, by Aoi, by the way. This is a, a sneaky ward spot a lot of the time, which gives some great vision up there and it's hard to counter ward, but he was aware of it. Uh, but anyway, that push only taking some health on the mid-tier one tower. And if Navi are not able to bring down towers at this point, they're currently, they were Dyer's trading farm for, on a Brewmaster attack. and a Skyrath. I would actually say right now, Aoi has a higher impact than the, than the Brewmaster does if he lands his silence correctly. Mm -hmm. He's level 7 on a position 5, or oh, sorry, position 4 support, Radiant's I guess, since the bounty is arguably attack. the position 5 in this game. But level 7 supports 9 minutes in is, is generally some of the best you're going to see. So Cloud9 just have all the tools available to them, and we haven't even talked about how easily they can snipe any hero on Navi's lineup. Hookshot into Pogs, into Mystic Flare is a safe kill. And they can even do the same with Searing Chains as well. There's just so much combination potential now for Cloud9 that they got over what could have been a rocky early game, but just turned out being a, a rocking early game instead, to be honest. And Pilot Eye, there's a ping that came out from Puppy. He's feeling the experience being drained out. So he knows Pilot Eye is just taking a little bit more from here. Oh, classic pie. <laughs> He's looking for it. But Navi is, is, Navi is aware of this. This actually has the bottle of Dandy as well as the Brutes of Puppy. And maybe that's the reason why the Courier just came back. He's looking for Anthing, and now he will be revealed. That was a very, very clear shadow walk in front of Funnick. He's still going to walk around here, though. There is a sentry ward down. It's a trap. Uh, if he walks in here, he's really dead. Oh, he's thinking yeah. about uh, it. Uh, yeah, he's, he's in range. They can see him, but they won't initiate unless there's some kind of... Brumos is here with no mana. What's he going to do anyway? You can at least afford a Blink Dagger. So this is actually a nice timing for the Blink Dagger. 11 Dyer's minutes here for a boss. And now he's back in range again, but there's more support. Funnick being nuked down. Blinded Radiant's by the Mystic Flare. Getting caught out in the cogs and hookshot there at Bone 7 as well. And this Observer Ward's walking over, working Dyer's overtime. And it helps because of Funnick. He cleaned off this little tree line area here, which is giving this ward so much more usefulness. Yeah, and if you're checking the array, the center reward from Navi is watching. They're really, really close to be able to counter ward it, but they can't see it. So they have like no idea where this ward is actually, because generally a lot of teams will put their wards somewhere in this area, which is why they sentried obviously, but Navi didn't find it. And it's it's providing a lot of utility for Cloud9 right now Dyer's and a lot of top intel. Tower is under mm -hmm. Of course the sentry getting de-warded means that uh, once again you can see Pilot I freely walk around this map on bottom lane. Doombringer, he's a long way up. TP support's coming in, and Moro is into the shackles. Funnick also TP's himself in, and that's going to be a very, very dead eternal envy on the bottom lane. Navi need to turn this into some sort of collateral. They need to start getting the towers. They will start pressuring Dyer's bottom here. They'll, top tower is under they'll be trading, though. So Cloud9 will be getting this tier 1 mid unless this ice cloud is actually really damn good. The problem all this one, the cloud! Oh my goodness! The horse was very quick to blink in there and get the clap, ensuring the pilot eye went down, which means this T1 tower is going to take a fall in the bottom lane. Krob didn't have to oh, expend her bone off. seven oh, again! In. Koro, locked in position, Mass Overwatch, it's got a full trap though. So Bone 7 will get himself back, the tower goes down, tower down being denied been in fact denied. by the double damaged up Ember Spirit. And where is a boss coming in? He's got Blink of Cool in one second time, he can Blink to actually find Aoi, but he goes over for Sing Sing, Siri chase a home there, and he goes for the split, jumps up, but he jumps back as well. But he's not in range of anyone else here from Navi. That's a really big deal for Sing Sing here that he manages to, f to to bait out, I would say, that split. It was not necessary at all and it was not going to work out with the Spirit already flying away, so...
Advantage coming out there for Cloud9, I would say. Yes, they did lose their towel, but now Na'Vi can fight for a while. Without Split, I still think the, the they, superiority they in the teamfight is Cloud9's. Ulti. They still have Crow Ulti as well as Ice Blast, and but that may be enough to keep, uh, keep Cloud9 attack. back. Yeah, at, the, at the very least, for uh, for oh, Na'Vi, they didn't lose their mid towel because of their great Then he's committing, but look where Cloud9 is. They can see him, he comes to the sentry one. They just nuke him down straight away. Bounty's on the sidelines, the Creek Wave's still pushing in. Do they just count this as a victory? I think they do. I, I don't think Na'Vi have what it takes right now to, to siege this, and they are going to give up on it. They'll TP top and start split pushing. Oh, There's doom. the Doom going out on Koro in mid. It's, someone's going to get close to a dive. He's underneath the tower. The TP's oh, the crit. And, and the rocket. The rocket's going to come in. Then he's still got the remainder of his own, but this is only up for like three seconds, and now it's actually worn out. Clockwork on a long way. He'll come in nothing to help him. Skyrath drops the Oli and Dendi. With Rose having Blade now up, they can't even attack him to stop him. Very quick, very efficient kills coming out here from Cloud9. Damn, this clockwork has been a good hero of this game. You wonder right now... The moment I saw the pick, I was like, okay, this is a good clock pick, but I was not expecting it to be this useful. Boonsaven has been playing some phenomenal clockwork this game. They gave him the space too, because yeah. Funic was sitting up there on the top lane going, yeah, yeah, I'll attack you, and then all of a sudden, Pilot Eye, this guy. I didn't think it'd be as effective. I almost want to say that because of the Bounty Hunter, that Funic was really just... Oh, speaking he of Funic, he could be in trouble here. Pi is going to find him here. Yeah, in the corner. He's just going to track. He will have Shuriken if he starts yeah. teleporting, so yeah. he'll in be using that right now. And Funny is, is dead. And that's a track kill. Wait a little bit. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Kuro is going to get caught out as well. Clone 7. Man. Finding kills everywhere together with AUI. And at the same time, Sing Sing is farming and split pushing the bottom lane. Cloud9 are all over the place, and Navi just can't find a foothold anywhere in this game. Now, the mid tower already going Dyer's down. Sing Sing is starting to pressure the bottom tower even more. Now, the A ult is going to fly, it's going to whip completely. Sing Sing will be clearing out this wave quickly, and he does have a spirit behind him, so he can play pretty aggressively right here. The only Dyer's thing he needs to look out for is, is the Death Prophet Silence. He'll be backing out now. The, the second Rockets you see go. that rocket coming from the side, look, look at this. Dendi as well as Avost, they back themselves up towards the tower and then hug the very, very far tree line. They're expecting the clockwork to be over near the Ancients or in, in towards Roshan. You just never know when the rocket flare's flying across. And oh, now... Bounty. Oh, oh, Pilot I just warded. Yeah. He got scouted here, there might be a counter. They got, yeah, they already threw down a sentry ward in the river, so he can't come down there, and yeah, okay. Another one oh. there, and it's oh. close, it's close, the clap will go, but they need some extra detection. Infinite, there goes your dust. Pilot yeah, will take the fall. Now, Navi were prepping themselves to go in for Roshan just then. Funding TP'd himself in and made an army of trees that's just sitting inside the pit. And then he, he's gonna commit the ultimate. They know how far behind they are right now. They need something big. They use Crawl Ulti, they use Map Circle Quads. They need this Roshan, they need it quick. And they will get it as well. This is the kind of fight that Cloud9 can take. The, the one where Navi organized, get in, get all their stuff used, stand in one big bunch. Because again, the damage from Cloud9 just isn't there. That, yeah, they're exceptionally good at pickoffs. So as long as they find that, they're going to be fine. But Navi really making good use of their ultimates there. This is a, an important play for them. They have 10,000 golden experience behind, line. actually. Sing, sing. They need to find more. It's just searing chains of balls and holds in there. It's going to be fine. No, I, I, 4K gold! I almost want to give more props to, uh, to C9. Yeah, Sing Sing's got a hell of a lot. But they also knew, okay, if you can't take the fight on Roshan, what do you do? An Eternal Envy took out the tier, one, tier 2 tower on the top lane. They completely cut off Na'Vi from their own jungle. C9 had got map control, they're finding pickoffs left, right and center with the help of Pylai Dai, and every time they do, they push their gold advantage even higher. Sure, it's only a level 1 track right now, but the more kills that happen, level 2 track comes up, Na'Vi cannot continue to get picked off like this. All ultis or not, it's... It's the death of them, and it will be the elimination of them if they're not careful. The real issue for Navi here is to get into an organized team fight. It's very easy for them to get oh, an organized fight. Yeah. Yeah. He can't go on Sing Sing. It's almost like a bit of, uh, oh, maybe he can. With a little bit of silence, they could have controlled him. And the pigs are coming out saying Pilot Eye is running through that bottom river again. Both Observer and Sentry Ward are watching his movements here. So Prophet TP's in. He'll have to dust almost straight away, and he did manage to connect on Pilot Eye. Vortex slowing him down. So even though he's out of range of the Sentry Ward, the dust still remains, but they cannot reach him. Koro with no Blink Dagger. Puppy has an Ice Blast as Pilot Eye goes invis again, but the dust is about to wear off. In fact, it has worn off a secondary Sentry Ward, but Koro still not in range. And the rest of C9, Pilot Eye's almost walked the end. Tie of map to reach them inside the Dyerside jungle. I guess it was about time he actually got away. At, at some point, you're going to escape, right? The last three times he's been getting caught out, but. And amazing yeah. they've also burnt sentry wards for Na'Vi. So here's the issue for Na'Vi. They have a great teamfight lineup. They, they want to death ball some sort of lane, but 
with Cloud9's good early game, they're starting to split push very well. They've got Envy in one lane, they've got Sing Sing in another lane, and they've got the constant uh, threat Korea. of Clockwork Korea. being missing. <laughs> uh, he's not going to get close to that. It was sitting for like 10 seconds next to that Radiant Observer one. That's why he was moving himself over. He's like, this is just like three gold sitting there. Navi, the, what they what they need to accomplish is to find some sort of way into a team fight, or just to get to a tower without trading. But Cloud9 constantly putting so Dyer's much pressure on the lanes, it's getting attack. really difficult for Navi to find a fight on their terms. And even should they find that fight, it's not even an obvious Dyer's win for them. They do. Tower. I would still say, even though they're behind on gold, they actually still have a team fight advantage. But right. any good sort of hookshot combination with the uh, with the Skyrath could easily make work on one of one of Navi's heroes. And if they manage to silence and kill off Havost instantly, I don't think Na'Vi can even take the fight anymore. I'm with you on that one, man. I kind of thought the Clockwork was going to take a fight in middle lane. He had Nimbid's route, was walking right attack. next to Havost the entire time. Not to mention that Denny was also tracked up, so they had perfect vision of that. It feels like Na'Vi needed gem, but I don't think anyone on the uh, Na'Vi side feels confident enough to hold one of those, let alone afford one of those. But the Yule Scepter looks like it's coming in, and uh, that's going to be finished up here for Krob in just a moment. We need to let Denny have these last hits here in the mid, but it looks like a Vorsk going to snipe one out. And Cloud9 aren't scared of playing the farming game. First of all, they're uh, one of the good teams at playing this kind of split push style, where you just farm multiple lanes. They've had great success with it with Envy's Morphling, uh, with Sing Sing on the Ember Spirit as well. And they do have one of those heroes in this game. And arguably, if this game goes really late, the Ember Spirit is going to be completely crushing the majority of Na'Vi's lineup. And what do Na'Vi have in late game? They have a Prophet. Death Prophet can get strong as well, but Brewmaster falls off a lot in the very late game. And they, I would say... Oh, quick enough, there goes Clock. He does a silence. He, split. he, he didn't get it. Off. He gets a split out. With a crop ulti down too, they're going to go deep in here, Na'Vi. Slow and searching for both seven. There's the hold, four stopping him a little bit further away. Sing Sing, he's in the middle Radiant's of this Na'Vi lineup. As Denny falling. runs himself deeper in. Dandy, so low on life. He's got the Aegis, the Morbis almost burn it off. Because then he loses his ultimate. The crew mask right now going to wear off the block. Look at the crowd, kills the Sing Sing. Clockwork, throws it back in. Moro, Na'Vi next to the Doombringer. Very seven as she picked up the double kill. And they blew the Aegis to the Immortal. So Denny comes back alive again. Tracked up instantly. The high loop has been for the BKB beat up. Eternal Levy chasing him down, the orbs chasing as well, and there is a four star in the slight chain. Giving 19 to 8 the T1 down. Hey, ulti! It's gonna clip Ali. I this is not gonna be enough. It's pretty close, but he needs to drop below 85 health, I believe. It's level 1 ult. Yeah. Oh, He's fine. He'll be okay. Nice attempt from Puppy there, but great fight again by Cloud9. They find. You know, that's what, I, what I'm saying, that that fight wasn't even that ideal for them. They jump in Bone 7 with the Clockwork, they don't get the silence up from the Skyrath, so the split comes off, so Na'Vi actually do get some sort of a chance of fighting. At the very least for Na'Vi, they got the Tier 1 tower, but Bone 7 with the Ag Scepter manages to get another hook shot off very shortly after. And oh, the follow puppy. through from, from the rest of his team just... Is Palai going to do anything here? Funic was about to TP in to help him out. Not enough mana for Bounty Hunter to have the, the damage to kill a puppy. Oh, he's gonna get sprouted. No Quelling Blade. There's the dust, there's the AL. He's gonna come in or connect on him as well, and with a Prophet Ollie bouncing over. Highline Eye is punished for being a little over aggressive inside the Dire Side jungle, but the rest of C9 is smoked up, and Bone 7, he wants to hook in right now, and he's looking for the target. A Vorst and Koro, and on the other side of the creep camp, but he can pick up almost two right now. Hook shots up, actually misses on the hook shot. Koro will hex him up, needs to have some balls up, but he's sealed up now, at least the Mystic Flare. And Avorst will back up. He was actually seven seconds off having gone. Oh, well, seeing. Yeah, you'll set her up. We'll buy a Denny a little bit of time. Funny with the mech. He just sits there and deep. Oh, I missed the chance. That could be punished. Funny in fact turns around right now. The support's coming in. Sing Sing jumps away. The attack from Funny will follow him out. Both of has managed to kill off Dandy. And the support rotates in. Brewmaster has to go into the split. He had no other choice for the Terminal Envy having Doom off cooldown. He sends the Doom up. And who's he really going on here? There's no support coming in. Hookshot's being thrown out. Avorst needs to get out with the he Earth does. ruling. If he wants a chance of surviving this, he's going to try he's gonna it blink. now. He's got to blink straight away, but wait for the attack of Owie. He's trying to wait as long as possible to hit the timing perfect, but. The blink will still come out from a force and he gets away to safety. Another fight won by Cloud9. They're keeping they're keeping the map relatively well pushed. They've only lost, you know, they're playing against this kind of Navi lineup. They've lost two towers in 22 minutes. I think it's a great accomplishment for them. Even with the amazing early game they had, it's still not easy to hold on to this much of the map at this point. They're just controlling it very well. I think Highlight Eye is like the unsung hero of this game because, yes, he is dropping dead a couple of times, but he takes so much attention from Navi. They keep having to buy dust and sentries to counter him out. He still gets out some really crucial wards, giving them so much intel and telling them how they can can actually play around the map. 
And I was doubting the support bounty pick. I was like, when well, when Na'Vi starts team fighting and pushing, this bounty is going to be useless. But he's just set up so much and he's bought so much time that it turned out to be an amazing pick for Cloud9 in this game. Mm -hmm. I want to point out too, so Bone 7, I think we can probably agree that his performance on Tide in the previous game was underwhelming. Yes. It's like if you take the average of the last game and this one, he's still way, if you're way above average on his performance. He's currently 10, 0, and 7 on the clockwork. Yeah. Absolutely he's, outstanding performance. He's been perfect. I don't think we've had a single time where we've said, oh, hookshot missed. That actually hasn't happened yet. He's been, he missed one. He missed one. I saw one. Oh, that was the one which he was doing on the spirits? He missed one. What a scrub. Yeah, obviously. We'll uninstall Dota later. Uh, but yeah, 22 to 10 now on the board. And they just keep moving forward. Sing Sing with his Battle Fury up and running. Continues to farm up. He's actually got a hell of a lot of CS. He's 150 CS. He's not high on the net worth, however. Mainly because he's got three deaths to his name. This is not helping his case. But yeah. when you have players like Eternal Envy, who have a over 13k net worth, now with Shiva's mech as well as BKB, 24 minutes into the game, you're feeling pretty good. And Envy actually going in, because he didn't go for the Blink Dagger. We don't see the Hoof Stomp into the, uh, the Centaur War Runner aura uh, in on the Doombringer. He just goes for the Pack Wolf. He's buffing up the extra damage here at Cloud9. It's really good. Oh, right, oh, my. oh my god. That, that was just painful to see. And Koro, while the boss. Oh, he didn't get the clap off. This is a real disaster right now. He didn't clap. He just went for the split because he saw Eternal Man, Envy. Navi don't make any use of the split, which they can. They're going to lose the mid tower for sure. And maybe even a second tower. Or maybe even Cloud9 going high ground or Roche. Navi lose so much teamfight potential out of that split being wasted. Yep. 100 seconds on cooldown now for the, for the Brewmaster split. This is tier 2 tower lost. Navi can't get a ultimate from Puppy. Well, Two heroes here. It's still though, it's, it's a level one AA ultimate with no extra buff ups from Magnus. It's just not enough. Even Prophet Ultimate bounces around, but the entire creep wave up the middle lane just tanks it. What level is this? Yeah, okay, it's, it's a level two Dyer's rather than nature. It kind of felt like a level one as it bounced around. Navi will not be losing the second tier two though, since the, the bottom lane is nicely pushed out here by Phonic. Rocket will try to, to push it up a little bit, but. I think yeah. they may just try and go for a fight if they can. If, if Na'Vi, uh, yeah, look at them come up. They actually smoke up and move out, Radiance and then the blink away from, from Pylai die. And the dust being used there by Koro yeah. as well, so now that's on cooldown. And look at look at C9, they know they can fight. Bone 7 is in a position right now where he wants to just directly hook in. He's got a perfect target. He's got two lined up, and there it is, hooking on in. Humphrey there to make but the Mystic Flare kills him off, and Dandy getting destroyed on the back line. Ooh. The mass over wants to go down, but Envy, he is bringing the doom the way of Na'Vi, and Koro also going down. The Brewmaster running out through the top river, but he's got Owie throwing the birds at him. Earth charge and everything they've got, almost not damage, really low on part, he goes in mid, and the boss goes down solo to Owie, proving to once and for all that he is important, and all of Na'Vi are on the sidelines, and Na'Vi, man, I think now, this kind of feels like they're out of it. This is almost impossible to come back from, the, the lead is now 20,000 in a 26 minute game, and they're actually even playing a lineup that I would still say is worse than, worse than the late game, so, mm, Cloud9. You know, I was I was nervous for them after the second game since, as we talked about before the series even began, Na'Vi extremely experienced under pressure like this, and Cloud9 have been struggling in some series in important grand Dyer's finals, and you could, you could be worried for Cloud9 Radiant's going into an elimination match like this in such a great tournament that they Dyer's they wouldn't be able to pull it off, and they just silenced the critics here in Look game two, three. Has to Yule Scepter up right now. That level death bonus damage was there too, and they just attract him the second he comes back down. Puppy, the Searing Chains is almost killing him. If there's a hook shot, they'll take the kill, but looks like Clown 9 will give Na'Vi a bit he of respect. He still get the rocket snipe. Oh, he got mm. bottled. Yeah, he's alive. And the rocket misses. So Clown 9, they will be backing out. They almost got the tier 3 tower. And as I said earlier, they're not in a rush anyway, so if the... Just look at the warding as well, by the way. They're completely controlling the map. The one at the top here, they've got one around the Roche area. Should Na'Vi try to sneak that? One at the bottom tier too. Even one up here at the... I mean... There's pretty much nothing that Navi can do that Cloud9 aren't aware of. The only way they even get out on the map is with smoke, but Pilot out with the blink dagger. It's almost constantly oh, someone tracked and oh my goodness, Kuroki again. Singh was farming on bottom lane and then just jumped in towards middle lane to take the kill.
This has not been Koro's game, but it's also a very hard game to play Shadow Shaman in with how much farm the Clockwork got, but he's now 0-10 on the Shadow Shaman. It's just, it doesn't really matter where Koro goes. There's so many heroes that just snipe him off. The Skyrath Mage, the Ember Spirit, especially the Clockwork, and any combination of, of two of those will just one-shot him pretty much, so. Like a Navi, they're, they're, they're clutching for some kind of hope. And uh, the only one that really uh, got is Funnick on that bottom lane, but Navost, Searing chained up. Owie didn't actually attack. They lost the side of him over the tree line as the night time did strike. But this, there's just some kind of like maybe Proper can push out past oh, the oh, 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 down oh, again. This time it's Eternal Envy that will take the kill. But Skyrat, that Mystic Flare keeps dropping down. The Brewmaster has been used again. Now the Searing Chain over on Koro and Denny back in the middle. Dropping him low. The Brewmaster send the Ember up. But Havos, he's got to get out of here again. But maybe they can kill up Simsing. The Hex, the Silence, the Crypt Swarm. Maybe it's enough damage. And it is. They bring him down. Now jumping up towards Howie. Letting Denny he's only going to work. The buyback has already come out from Simsing. Rejoining the engagement. The Clockwork. Back oh, I got three! The Hawk. The Lord will come down, however. Havos, he's dying in size. A double kill for both. Seven trying to be out. He's got enough time. No, he doesn't. He burns up, and the only one alive is now the captain of Navi, looking at the corpse of his teammates down the middle. And there is nothing he can do. He tries to ice blast a hook shot this time, only barely missing on Puppy. This is easily the tier three. It's probably Rax as well. Navi have too long left on their respawns Dyer's here. Then he will. Or eternal Envy. <laughs> It just goes Dyer's high ground. And he's leading the charge here. Yep. The barracks are gone. The Navi's hopes. This is the first time at any international that they will be knocked out before the grand finals unless some sort of miracle gets pulled out of the hat here. Dude, Dyer's unless they don't unplug their keyboards and mice right now, I don't think Dyer's Navi is capable of winning this game. Attack. They've lost mid racks now. The range rank is almost down. And look at C9. They know this is no risk Dota. They've seen Navi come back before. They know about the miracles that can happen, and they are not going to give any chance for it to happen. Funnick again, he's attempting to keep this bottom lane out. Well, C9 can just go top. Even if they lose a tier 2 and a tier 3 tower right now, it means nothing to them. Rax is everything. They're not going to be struggling with map control at all, since they have so good split push with the Doom and the... And the Ember Spirit at this point, so even should they lose a little bit of map control, it's, they're going to be fine. They still have the vast superiority anyway, so... These tracks from Pilot Eye that just keep coming out. It's got to be really frustrating for Navi to play against, actually. Dendi's going to Yules it off. Even now, Pilot Eye, he's got yeah, Blink Dagger. This is a desperation play. He's got Blink Dagger and Force Up. You can't do this. The Rocket will always scout you out, let alone the tracks. And if you get caught in close, like, man, now he's even walking around to Skyrim, man, you can solo anybody. He's got Mystic Flare, he's got Concussive Shot, he's got so much damage which he can just seal you up and amplify. And then he's also got his own Rock which he can cast on you. Is this is attack. everything you've got for the Skywrath Mage. <laughs> he is a solo killer support. And not to mention the Total Envy, who's sitting at 3.6k gold right now. Radiance the Boston highest net worth in the game, attack. almost reaching 19,000 in 31 minutes. And it's just pushed the entire experience and gold advantage up. It's 27 and a bit I mean, the XP advantage for uh, Cloud9, and it's almost 25,000 gold advantage their way. And this smoke is very, very obvious for Cloud9. They're actually going to even bait position. out Envy. They can go right on top of Envy, but then BKB, maybe not so great. Brewmaster starts to split. He's going to keep at least now with his Now, Memphy, that's no more trapped up. Nice hit by Cora, but he's already lost his crop. And now in comes Sing Sing. That damage output is just too high. It's a double kill for Sing Sing, triple kill for Sing Sing, and all true kill for Sing Sing. And GG! Navi are out! Cloud9! have eliminated the three-time grand finalist of, of the international four Navi. Cloud9 will advance themselves to play up against BG Gaming later today. It's been a long road for some of these players. They had to watch on the spectator lines during TI2. And then TI3, some of them made managed to get there. And now this team has undergone many different names. But now it's here as Cloud9, and they advance themselves through the first round of the lower bracket. And to play a go up against VG Gaming later today.